and welcome to my October wrap-up. In October, I didn't get to everything that I had planned to, but I did get to six books, three physical and three arcs, so I think I did pretty good. It wasn't a terrible reading month, but it wasn't amazing either. It was very... not fluctuating, but there were highs and lows. But let's just get into the books. So the first book that I read in October was Dungeons and Drama by Christy Boyce, and this follows two characters, Riley wants to be a Broadway director, but she gets in trouble with her parents and is forced to work at her dad's store, which sells like board games and stuff like that. And Nathan, her classmate, works at the store. So they make a deal with each other that if they pretend to date, Riley will help Nathan make his Dungeons and Dragons teammate jealous. And in turn, Nathan will help her make her Ex believe that she is moving on from him. And that is basically the plot. It is very cute. I ended up giving it a 4.5. I really loved this. It was super cute. I loved the characters. I loved the fake dating trope. I loved the Dungeons and Dragons part of the book. It was really fun. I loved the like friendship group. Everything was super cute and fun and I had a great time reading this. I highly recommend if you like YA romances, fake dating, and like nerdy stuff in books. The only reason I didn't give it a five star was because there was a little bit of miscommunication in the last third of the book and I don't personally love that but it was still great. The next book that I read was Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman and this is obviously the fifth volume of the series that follows two boys falling in love with each other. One is gay, one is bi and we follow them going through their last teenage years, so like 16 to 18, all of the issues that they go through um, from eating disorders to sexuality to going to university, all that stuff. I had a good time with this. It wasn't my favorite. Maybe I read it in a bad time, but I did not give this a five star as I did with most of the other volumes. I don't know. I gave this a four. I feel like that's more correct to me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to review this without spoiling, um, it just wasn't amazing, it didn't make me cry, nothing of the sort, so it's just a four. The next book was the first arc that I read this month, which was Home Office Romance. I don't remember who the author is, but it will be on the screen. And this follows two people. First we follow the male main character, don't remember their names again, I'm so sorry. But because of the pandemic, he starts working at home and he realizes that his home is not decorated so he starts making it more of a home. And while doing that he encounters his neighbor who is our female main character. And we follow them interacting with each other, hanging out with each other because they can't go anywhere except be in their houses and so they start hanging out with each other during the pandemic and after it's set around kind of that era. But it's basically the man's point of view and he is telling the story of how he met his wife. The author is the same author who wrote Sweat and Soap, which I have read a bit of, not the whole thing, but I will probably get back into it soon, maybe? But it was very cute. I gave it a 4.5 as well. It was very fun, cute. It's a standalone, so amazing. My review is basically, it was very cute and fun. It's a manga. I don't know how to go in depth. <laughs> the next book that I read was Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter, and I did vlog this. This follows a TV show. It is written in mixed media kind of formatting. We follow this show that is trying to solve an unsolved case from 20 years before, and the producer slash director, I don't even remember, he is involved with that case. It was his stepfather who was murdered. And so we follow a group of professionals, I guess. Um, so like lawyers, police officers, private investigators, psychologists. I think there's six of them and they try to solve this case and gather more information and evidence. And the main crime is that the stepfather was found in the garden with his head bashed in um, and it was so severe that there was no way that he could have fallen. And the wife was not home, only the director, the son, was home and the two daughters were at the cinema. And so we follow them diving in, seeing what other suspects could be involved with this 
crime, all that jazz. I did vlog this, as I said, but it is full of spoilers, so if you're interested, I will leave it on top of the screen. I did have fun reading this, but it wasn't the best thing because I literally predicted who it was from page 20. I ended up giving it a 3.5 just because I was very entertained annotating and trying to figure out who it was. There was a plot twist that very much shook me. It was entertaining, it was fun, I loved the formatting, but it wasn't the best murder mystery ever, if that makes sense, but it was still very fun. So if you're not an annoying person like me that figures out everything from page one, maybe give this a shot. I enjoyed it. The next book that I read was another ARC, which is also a graphic novel, and it is called Soma, I don't know, um, by Fernando Lor or Yor, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not Spanish. But this follows a comic book artist, is that the name of it? Who is having kind of like a writer's block and at the same time the world gets invaded by aliens. So we follow the main character and an alien trying to stop the invasion from completely destroying Earth and that's basically the plot. I ended up giving this a four. It was very cute. I loved the art style. I do follow the artist on Instagram so that's why I asked for this arc. I will leave the artist on the screen because I'm gonna butcher the name um, because it's two authors, I think. But I did have a lot of fun. It was very cute. There were some sad moments, some funny moments. The art style is my favorite thing ever. It is very colorful and cartoony, love it. I just had a good time. And it's one of the artists that I follow on Instagram. So I wanted to read it because of that. And the last book and arc that I read in October is A Dark and Drowning Tide by Alison Saft. We follow two characters, Sylvia and Lorelai. And they are the two apprentices to this woman. Um, and Lorelai, who we is the point of view of the book, she wants to be able to get into this expedition that this woman and the king and stuff are all part of. Because Lorelai is a folklorist, and I think Sylvia is a naturalist. Something like that, whatever. They study folklore and mythical animals, not animals. Um, creatures. I don't know. So we follow the two characters and their mentor plus a bunch of other characters going on an expedition to find this magical well. Whatever, doesn't matter. But on the first few days of the voyage their mentor is murdered and so we follow Sylvia and Lorelai who are rivals work together to figure out who killed their mentor at the same time trying to find that m magical well. I think that's the plot. I don't even know. Worst case, I'll leave something on the screen because I'm garbage at explaining stuff. I was very excited for this. It was marketed as a sapphic romance with a rivals to lovers kind of vibe, so I was very excited. But unfortunately, this was not for me. I gave it a 1.5. It was just not for me. The murder mystery was so boring, so underwhelming. The whole time, nobody's actually investigating anything. Lorelai does not care that there's a murderer amongst them. She just continues on with life. Doesn't care, her mentor died, she doesn't even react, doesn't care. There are moments where she finds evidence and then completely ignores it, doesn't do anything with it. Why? The plot was a bit boring to me and the pacing was horrific in my opinion. It took so long for me to read this and I felt like I was, I don't even know. I was trying so hard to finish this and thankfully I did because it's an arc and I like to finish arcs but oh my god I wanted to DNF it so bad. The romance was also not my favorite. It felt more like they should have been just friends. I don't know. And the world building was interesting but it was so confusing. There were so many words that I was just like I don't even know what that means but I'm just gonna continue because nothing is explained. Or if it was explained, I clearly did not understand it because throughout the whole book, I did not know what a will dilute was. Don't even, I don't know anymore. I just, I was confused, bored, and bored throughout the whole book. So it was just not for me. Which now makes me question if I want to read more from this author or not because I do have other books by this author on my want to read, which are these. Um, I think there's two, but I don't know anymore. I, I'm gonna have to 
think on that. But these three books plus the three arcs were all the books that I read in October. Not very October vibes except for this one but whatever. This year is going terribly so we're just gonna let it be. Um, I liked some, I hated some, some were mediocre but I had fun. But that is everything for today and I'll see you in my next weird video. Bye!